I will conclude today our short series on Colossians. Okay, so this morning and this evening, this is in my, in my list, the fifth lesson. I'll just call it our new home. Say it with me. Our, our new home. home. Okay. So next week, we will start a new series. And that will be on the book of John. Have you guys started reading the book of John? Okay, praise God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up to, to, to everybody, even, even those that are following us on the internet. Uh, read the book of John, and then if you have questions, uh, if, if they can be given to us ahead of time, then perhaps I can incorporate in some of our teachings. Now, the last time we were talking about the letter of Paul to the Colossians, we were applying, we were talking about how to apply the ministry to the body of Christ. Okay? We, were also, we also learned the purpose of the ministers. Primarily what we discussed was to reveal, to make fully known the word of the Lord. And then, the other week, we were talking about its application to the saints. So from general, it went to the church, you know, it went to the saints. The conclusion, the concluding uh, teaching of Paul makes it, makes, makes the application even, even more specific. And that is its application to our new home. Say new home. Now I'm not saying you're going to move to a new house, okay? New home means new family. Last Friday, I was, uh, in, my, in, in my teaching, I asked the question, do you really want to be free? Or do you really want your prayers answered? Because people sometimes pray, but they don't really want their prayers to be answered. Okay? For, for example, if you're praying for a spouse and you say, Lord, give me a very godly woman who fears you, uh, who serves you, and all of that. And then you are impatient. You cannot wait for somebody, so you just date one of the daughters of the devil, you know. That means you are not serious about your prayers. Because if you are serious about your prayers, then if it is the will of God, you will not settle for what is below uh, what you are praying for, if it is the will of God. Now also, when you begin to pray, there's a cooperative issue involved in a lot of our prayers meaning we need to cooperate. Now, one of the prayers that we always ask God is, Lord, grant us to have a wonderful family. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> we, we always pray that, and, and it's one of, the, uh, one of the most common prayer requests, either, either in reference to a spouse, to children, to in-laws, to siblings. We are always asking, Lord, we want a great family. Now, if, if that is your prayer, do you really want a great family under God? Again, because in, in this section of our teaching, it involves some of the responsibilities that uh, is required of us. Now, <clears throat> when we are talking about the new man, this new man that we discussed, even when we were talking about Ephesians and, and Philippians, of course, we are talking about a person who is enriched with the Word of God. When, when, uh, when we have kids playing in the streets, that is in the Philippines here, they don't play, play in the streets. Uh, they play in the playground. But we will classify the kids as to who is malnourished and who is not. Because you will find kids in the Philippines playing, very skinny, but with big tummy. You know? And then you will find uh, some children who are very chubby or fat. And here, when somebody is fat, we exam we, a fat child, we tell them to lose weight. In the Philippines, if you have, your child is a fat, it's a sign of prosperity. That means uh, a very different uh, concept. That means your, chil your, your parents can give you something to eat and uh, you, are, uh, you have been set free in the kitchen to roam around. You know? That is basically what it is. Now, 
God willing, as, as we continue this tonight, I will, I'll, I'll show you, I will not dis discuss in detail what is normally discussed about wives and husbands and children, but I'll speak in generalities. How, how Paul is taking together all of these teachings and then applying it in our families, okay? Let's start. Colossians 3 verse 12. Colossians 3 verse 12. Again, the title is Our New Home. Verse 12, Therefore, so that, that signals a conclusive, conclusive, conclusive uh, teaching. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another, if anyone has a grievance against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also, so you are also to forgive. So, the, uh, the standard of forgiveness is set by Christ. As Christ has forgiven you, for, or, or in the same way that you want Jesus to forgive you, forgive others. Okay? Now, you know that, that uh, Jesus never forgave you unless you repent. Is that correct? Otherwise, everybody will be going to heaven, but not everybody will be going to heaven. You have to repent first before you will be forgiven. In the same way, I think, the problem why relationships are not being properly repaired is because without asking forgiveness, we assume the person received forgiveness. Now, your heart has to be forgiving. Okay? You can't allow other people's behavior to control your behavior. You have to make a decision that whoever offends you will offend you, had offended you, you have already forgiven. But they will never receive that forgiveness unless they repent. Okay? If they have a chance, of course, to, to, uh, to contact you. But there are, I'm very aware that there are some people in the past who, whom you have probably offended or you have offended that right now there is no way of you getting in contact with them. I think that's, uh, that's not part of the rule. I think if that is the case, you repent, God forgave you, and go on with your life. But I am convinced, even as the context of what we are talking about is church life, family life, community life, it's within your reach. Okay? It's within your reach. Like, for example, one of the, we will call it prison epistle also, is... Uh, when, when uh, Paul was writing to Philemon, uh, his runaway slave, Onesimus, was, was, uh, was saved. And he became a disciple of Paul. Now, Onesimus, uh, who is that? Philemon is within reach because he's a faithful disciple, a spiritual child of Paul. He's within reach. So now, Onesimus doesn't want to get a hold of uh, Philemon. But look at this. Paul told Philemon, told Onesimus to return to Philemon. He's already a runaway slave. But Paul said, I want you to return to your boss that you ran away from. Now this is critical to, uh, to living a forgiven life. This is critical to making things right. If somebody is within your reach, to ask for forgiveness, you had to. You cannot just be a Filipino, pakakindat kindat na lang. Okay na. It's, it's not going to work that way. And so, Paul gave a letter of, the letter to Philemon, to, uh, Philemon is like a letter of endorsement of Paul on Onesimus. He was even very dramatic. He said, well, you know, you owe me everything, he said. And uh, I'm old and I'm ready to die. Please uh, give this old man some favor, he said. Number one, I'm about to visit you. Please prepare a room for me. And number two, he said, I want you to receive Onesimus as a brother. And that's the reason why Paul wants to visit him. To make sure that Philemon does not entertain any idea of revenge against a runaway slave who is now a brother in the Lord. You see? I think we are so used to uh, just winking at each other. And so we can take advantage of each other, badmouth each other, 
and think that we can just wink, you know, betray each other and think we can just wink at each other. No, it's not going to work that way. You have to ask for forgiveness. And when you ask for forgiveness in humility, that's when your release will take place. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you're also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you are also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you. In all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. <clears throat> and whatever you do, now this is not the context of whatever you do. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. And then, here is where we found the context of the family. Verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't, don't be bitter uh, toward them. Which means in this church, uh, a lot of husbands were embittered by their wives. I, I really don't know the exact uh, reason. Although I can only, I can only uh, assume because of the first instruction. Wives submit to your husbands. I think the husbands were embittered because of insubmissive wives. You know. One of the uh, greatest need they say today. Now I'm not 100% fully subscribed to it, but I see the point. They say one of the greatest need of uh, men today is respect. You know. Of course, women need, I think, a lot more respect. But I, I think th these husbands were embittered. And, and from the context of the prison epistles, I think some of these women became slanderous and gossipy. And so it embittered the, the husbands. Uh, that's why I, I'll, I'll speak to, to, to the wives now. Sometimes you're your, uh, your husbands are quiet. They don't complain. Don't embitter them by your big mouths, okay? And uh, by in submissiveness. In the same way, I think these wives became like that because they don't experience the love that they ought to be getting from their husbands. Considering that a lot of these wives were given to men. A lot of these wives were just given to men. They don't have to court, or go through courtship. And so especially during the times of Rome when there are slaves and free men, a lot of these uh, wives were just, were just given to, uh, to men, especially in the context of where, where Colosse is, is located. It's, uh, it's uh, very close to, to Greece where uh, all of these immoralities are taking place. And so, both parties now need to come together and realize the deficiencies uh, in, in our society. And, and please, there can only be one preacher, okay? Uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and take care of the deficiencies that uh, are taking place in our relationships. Because again, I'm telling you, building, I, I told you this is the Father's Day. Just because you got married, it doesn't mean you have a family. It means you started building a family. Okay? And to build a, not because you have the money, you have the materials to build a house, it was already delivered in your, in your front yard, you have the contractors, it doesn't mean you have the house. The contractors have to build that house still. And have you noticed when you, are, when you are building a house, sometimes the owner of the house will begin to say, well, change this, change that. You know, I, I know that when I started doing carpentry work for my wife. She, she will tell me, just do this. And the moment you start doing it, oh, you can do that, let's do this more, you know. And so you, you, you get annoyed. 
But that is part of the building process. Some of you who bought a house, you're very excited. And then after you move in, your wife or your, your wives or your husbands or your children begin to say, this is too small. Be before you're just living in a small apartment and then you begin to complain, it's too small. And then several projects uh, are being issued already. Let's do this, let's do that. That is part of the building. And so you begin to say, well, this is not the perfect house that I want. Why? Because it's a building process. So not because you got married and not because you have children means you have, a, you have, you have built your family. Your family is still being built like the body of Christ. The moment you get born again, we are part of the household of faith. But the Bible says this, like living stones, we are being built. Okay? So we are a house, but we are being built. And that building process takes time, and it takes cooperation from all parties involved. Okay? So, husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Children. Are there children here? Oh, my goodness, the parents answered. You, you can just, this is the sign of the times, you know. <laughs> children, obey your parents in everything. Say everything. everything. What does everything mean? Everything that you can call a thing. It's everything, okay. For this pleases the Lord. Now, husbands were, were mentioned, right? Now, fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Have you noticed Paul said, wives, husbands, right? Children, fathers, how come he didn't say mothers? It's not fair. Walang <laughs> mothers. Slaves. Slaves will be helps. Now, in the Jewish context, they are not, they are not actually allowed uh, to own a slave. A Jewish slave is actually what we call today as a maid, a house, household help, okay? That will be the equivalent of, of, of that. Slaves obey your human masters in everything don't work only so as you can say slaves will be employees employees obey your human masters in everything don't work only while being watched as people pleasers that means if you work hard when somebody is watching uh, just when somebody is watching you're a people pleaser okay so can you imagine most employees are like that But work wholeheartedly, fearing the Lord. Again, it's anchored on the Lord. Verse 23. Whatever you do, do it from the heart. As something done for the Lord and not for people. That's the anchor right there. Whatever you do, be it a father, uh, a, a husband, a wife, a child, an employee. Whatever you do, do it as you're doing it for the Lord. Knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. Inheritance will be, will be uh, what you're supposed to receive as a result of your obedience. You serve the Lord Christ for the wrongdoer, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. Now, listen. Do, do not, that, that verse, do not export it to other thoughts. Who is the wrongdoer here? For the wrongdoer, for, okay? For the wrongdoer, it's not an independent statement, okay? It's for the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done, and there is no favoritism. Who is the wrongdoer? The husband, the wife, the children, the slave, the father. Meaning they are not doing what Paul just said. Those who disobey this command according 
to him, that's good observation, will be paid back for whatever wrong he has done. And there's no favoritism. Meaning God will not say, well, you know, you are Eli the high priest, I will spare you. No, he wasn't spared. Well, you are Eli's uh, children, you are children of the high priest, you are successors of the high priestly ministry. It doesn't matter if you offer uh, the wrong fire, you will be spared. No. Because there is no favoritism. You know. Chapter 4, verse 1. Masters, this will be employers or bosses. Masters, deal with your slaves or employees justly and fairly. Since you know that you too have a master in heaven. Okay, so. The moment you get born again, uh, maybe your whole family is not yet saved. Or maybe your whole family is saved together. Okay? But you are running your life or your family in a certain way before, before you get born again. You know? I grew up in an ungodly family. My mother is a, is a housekeeper. My father is, is a porter. And... Uh, <clears throat> Our family is basically run, the father says, for as long as I'm putting food on the table, I'm doing my part. And they fought all the time. We, we, we children, we, we struggle against each other all the time, um, being, being too many in, in one family, I guess, and being poor. But then we get born again. The, the way we deal with each other is carried over after you get born again. Your behaviors. If you are a gossip before you get born again, you will have the tendency to be a gossip after you get born again. Whatever weaknesses you have, whatever habits you have before being born again is still with you. That's why the renewing of the mind. So now Paul, in the conclusion, conclusion of his epistle, begin to take all of his teachings and begin to say, let's apply it to your family. Why? Because that's your battlefront. Okay? You can smile all you want in front of your friends. You can be a hypocrite all you want. You can, you can pretend to be happy all you want. You go home if you are not happy. That will eat you up. Yeah. It, it will really eat you up. And no amount of praise the Lord and hallelujahs will, will cure that. Because Jesus did, Paul did not say, if you have a problem with your family, just shout hallelujah five times. Then you became a Roman Catholic. Instead of praying five Hail Marys, you are saying glory to God five times. You know? Uh, but by the way, on a side note, you know, the Pope had just approved same-sex union. You know? So, so you know that the backsliding of that religion is too deep. So the, the, a lot of the people will, will, will make it as a signal uh, because he's, they call him the vicar of Christ, but we call each other ambassadors of Christ. Okay? So don't be taken off by that uh, ungodly announcement that he made. Okay? We believe in the scriptures, and that's where we stand on. So going back to this, <clears throat> the moment you get born again, especially if you are already married, you will begin to notice that there has to be some changes, definitely. There has to be some changes that need to take place in your house. If you are going to build that house according to God's order. My kuya got born again, came home one Friday night, uh, Friday afternoon, Witness to me, my ate, and my nanai right away. I got born again. I was the first one to get born again after him. And then I begin to witness to my, to my parents. I begin to witness to uh, my siblings. And it was a lot of time. My, my, uh, my family, we were idol worshippers. 
Because if you grow up as a Catholic, you're an idol worshiper. Now, I already know, thou shalt not commit idolatry. I did not smash our idols. Now, nobody taught me this. I was just thinking. I was telling myself, why will I smash the idols? Because that's what we were being taught in the church. But I was telling myself, why will I smash the idols? Number one, I don't own those idols. I did not buy those idols. You know, my, my parents bought those idols. It's not with my own money. So I said, that is not mine. So I left it alone. And continued to witness to my, uh, to my parents. W one day, my, my parents just asked me this question. Because I'm no longer, I'm already very active in the church. And they asked me, oh, oh, say what's wrong with the idols? And I begin to teach them and teach them and teach them. One sitting. After that, nothing happened. The idols were still there. Few, few months later, I, I came home from school and the idols were no longer there. So I asked my, my mother, I said, what happened? She said, oh, we threw it away. We realized they are not gods. It's just the effect of the word of God. And, and I, I told you about me witnessing to my mother and I was fighting against her because of electric fun and he called me the child of the devil. You know? she, she told me, I thought you are a child of God. You look like the child of Satan. Now that is a rebuke from an unbeliever to a believer. But I took it as a challenge. I, I fasted three times because I told the Lord I will not go full time if my parents, if my family is not born again. So I fasted three times in the course of two years and I saw my whole family get saved. But there was a lot of, a lot of wrangling on personal behaviors. My kuya who who uh, brought me the gospel, was complaining to my mother uh, because, you know how, I did not grow up in a nice family like most of you perhaps. We, we don't talk nice to each other. We, we don't say please and thank you. I don't know, do you guys say please and thank you? Oh, yeah. You're way ahead of me when I first got saved. So, even riding the jeepney, my, my tone of voice will be very uh, rough. And one time, my, my kuya was complaining to my mother. He said, would you please talk to, my, to, to Jose? I don't know why. The way he talked to that old driver, I was very offended. And I was, I was saying, what's offensive to that? Because I have always talked like that. But then, upon the comment of my kuya, I knew something has to change. And so the, the reconstruction of my personal behavior and attitudes continue. God is still working on a lot of areas, but it has to continue. And the reason why I'm saying that is because in the process, I begin to have an eye that can observe. I was observing the family where I grew up in, and I begin to say this, I am not going to have a family like this. Yeah, I have never seen my father kiss my mother. I have never seen my mother kiss my father. I can only remember one time when my father asked me to kiss him. You know, we never really go out to eat. Uh, the way we go out to eat is we take our plate of food and go out. That's, that's how you go out to eat, you know. But uh, we never have those. But observing that, and then they fighting all the time, cursing all the time. Observing that, I said, if I'm going to have a family, I am not going to pattern it after the family where I grew up in. Why? Because my eyes were opened and I have seen. And I have met a lot of pastors and I look at their families as well and I say, I'm not going to be like that. Because... I've seen a lot of uh, brats, uh, children of ministers and leaders. They are the worst, you know. Because the parents trying to look holy won't rebuke their kids. I see that and I say, it's not me. You know, that's why my kids try to display some ungodly behavior in public. Uh, that's only once. Because that is something that I will never tolerate because I hated that when I uh, begin to see that. Why all of this sharing? Because if we, will, if we will look at the gospel, what is the use of the gospel if we cannot apply it to our own lives? 
Are you listening? Because ultimately, the greatest applications will be within our families. Now, none of us are going to be perfect until Jesus returns. But we are on this repair process with the help of God. Now, what, so now that you get, you get born again, you can say that your house now, especially if you have a family, is under new management. Remember on the last verse, masters, be nice to your slaves because you yourself have your own master. Now, why is Paul addressing the masters? Because headship is necessary. So, number one, your family will never become in compliance with God's word unless it is ahead. Yeah. Unless there has to be an installation and a recognition of God-given headship. Now, uh, praise God, it was given to, to husbands, okay? And the reason why I say praise God is because I'm a husband, I'm not a wife, you know, so it's in my favor. Now, people say, wow, that's, that's not fair. You don't know what you're talking about. That statement is coming from ignorance. Because if anybody can avoid leadership, they will. Because headship is a lot of responsibilities. Can you, can you imagine this, this president that we have right now, Trump? Somebody died of heart attack, COVID, they blamed him. China sent, uh, allowed global travel, it came here, they blamed him. Somebody slipped on Washington, they blamed him. Somebody killed somebody, they blamed him. That's headship. You run for office, that's part of the turf. You want to get married? You want to be head of the house? That's part of the turf. You cannot say it's not my fault. Nobody says it's your fault. It's just part of your turf. And so when you say, well, it's not fair that, uh, that the head of the house is the husband. Women, you better be thankful. You better be thankful because being a head of the house is a lot of responsibilities. Do you know that by statistics, husbands, even if they are irresponsible, die first uh, than the wives? Because of the amount of, of responsibility that the Lord had put on their shoulders. It, it's not placed on, on the women. Now, some women are very strong, stronger than their husbands, but they still don't have the headship. So, the first thing is, there has to be, under this new management, there has to be a recognition of the headship in the house. And that is given to the, uh, to the husbands, of course. Now, listen. The basis is in verse 12. As God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved. Number one, the reason why we have to build our new home is because we are chosen. Say we are chosen. When we say... We are chosen, it implies that there are choices. Okay? When I was courting my wife, she has choices. And if I look at the other men who were going after her, she has good choices. In fact, if I was her, I should be the least of her choice. Okay, she's got. Choices that are already rich. I mean, uh, I have met women. What kind of husband do you want to have? Rich. That's all. You know, rich. I don't care if they look like the snake. Rich. That's it, you know. Uh, that's their primary uh, qualification. Thank God she doesn't have that uh, qualification. But I was chosen. It will be difficult for her to say she chose me if there are no other choices. Choice implies availability of choices. Now listen to this. The reason why we have to build our new home because God chose us to build that new home. Okay? God decided to put his glory and the crown of his creation on humanity, not on the animal kingdom. It's like this. You have a choice who will be your best friend. Now some people, they decided their best friend will be their dog. God could have created a beautiful dog to be his best friend. That's his choice. But he chose a man, and he found a man by the name of Abraham. And so he said, Abraham, my friend. 
Adam did not become a very good friend to him. The guy re rebelled against him right away. But, but uh, Abraham became a good friend to God. And so what, what God is saying is, I have chosen you. I, have should, I should have chosen the birds of the air, the, the fish in the ocean, and uh, even the dogs, you know. But God says, no, they're not good enough. They have chosen us. That choice also means, if you are making choices, he considers us to be the best. If you're going to make a choice, you want, you want the best. My uh, youngest son is, is uh, fascinated with archery because his kuya uh, brought him to the, uh, oh, well, his mother brought them to, uh, to learn a little bit about archery, courtesy of their uncle, Ahmed, right? Uh, in the Philippines. So they came home with, with bow and arrow. And, uh, you know, when Joel set his mind on something, he, he knows how to research the internet. So, so he, was, he was telling me, Papa, you need to get me a bow. I said, uh, and said what's the best bow? Now I'm, I'm, I'm as ignorant as most people are in bow and arrows, you know. But I know a little bit about history, so I said, the best archers are the Koreans. I said, really? I said, yeah, they're the best archers. And uh, I said, that's from my, from my knowledge of history. They're the best archers. And so he, he said, so, so you mean I have to find a Korean bow? I said, I think so. If they're the best archers, they must have, you know, it's logic. And so that boy, that boy just went to the internet and was looking at all kinds of bows, Tibetan bow, Chinese bow. I mean, to the extent that, you know, when you don't study, you become a bow bow, you know? And uh, <laughs> you have to be a Filipino to understand that. But finally, he found this Korean bow. After all the choices. And so he told me, Papa, can you, give me, can you buy this bow? I said, I'll buy that for you. And so I told him, uh, he, he made the choice on a Wednesday. When are you going to order it? I said, this Friday night. He said, why Friday? I said, because you keep changing your mind. I don't want to order something, and then you will change your mind. I said, you have a couple of days. So he browsed through the internet, and after making choices, he said, this is what I want. Meaning, he has choices. Okay? Remember this, God has choices. And he decided to choose you. No. Apply this to families. Let's look at the will of God. Anne may have other choices. But if she was praying for God's will on her life, God chose me to be her husband. That means even if she doesn't see it, as far as God is concerned, I'm the best for my wife. Okay? Now you know where I'm going in this. I will not look at you guys. <laughs> you married couples, whether you know it or not, as far as God is concerned, you are best for each other. Okay? I'm not looking. Okay. So. <laughs> Why did I say that? After you got married, Stop looking around. Are you here? Because number one, you show your unbelief. That maybe you missed something. That question has to be asked before you get married. After you get married, you are done choosing. You are done choosing. Whatever choice you made, that's it. Okay? That's why there's a lot of broken families. They call it Monday morning quarterbacking. You find a, a husband, a, a handsome young man, and say, oh, I wish I married him. Oh, that's a sin. You're lasting after another man. Oh, I wish I married her. That's a sin. It's called adultery in your heart. You see? You've got to believe that God's choice is the best. Second, you are holy or separated. That means God put you together. I'm applying this. Put you together now. Now, in this family of, of wife, husband, and children, they may not like each other that much as they interact, but, but boy, they are, they are separated for each other. You know, my family is separated by God for me. My kids could have been born under other parents, okay? But God decided I will have them. And so now I have to take these raw materials and begin to raise them up in the fear of the Lord. And I'm, and I'm telling you, as I follow the word of the Lord, I'm very pleased with, with my kids. We have problems, lots of problems, but I'm very pleased. 
Can you imagine even James here is uh, helping me now in my carpentry work? That's pleasing to me, okay? Uh, the only problem that we have is he goes to school, and so he will tell me, I have no time for you, Papa, you know. I, I, have, I have homework. But he, he's, he's helping me a lot, and, and uh, it's, it's a delight to have these kids. Be you know why I'm delighted with them? Because God chose. Now listen to me. How many kids do you have? That's not your choice. That's God's choice. God decided you only need that many. I wish I had six. But I surrendered after DJ was born. I was scared that another girl will be born. I said, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, my wife is, a, is, is, is in a problem to me, and then here comes DJ. And believe me, she is a problem. You know? <laughs> and so after DJ was born, I, I withdrew on the six. I said, oh, Lord, I have to rethink. You know? Maybe God is rebuking me here. So I... I remember after, after uh, well, even when DJ, the doctor says, uh, around 75%, he's, he's, she's a girl. I said, I still have 25%. <laughs> and then on the last month, the doctor said, sir, it's 99% girl. I said, I still have 1%, you know. <laughs> but but that, is, that is my, my, my mode of thinking. And so I, I backed off on the six, and God gave me, gave me five. But the number of kids that you have, you have to settle it. God chose you to have that number of children. Okay? You say, well, well uh, how come others don't have kids? I don't know. But God is the one who opens and closes the womb. That's his choice. Now, you can believe God, but that is his choice. Okay? And, and sometimes we want to outdo God and outsmart God we want something else, though. Your desires will be given. But don't, don't make excuses. Well, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me. How can I do this to my kids? I, 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 have five, I, have, I have three kids. Look, I have five. I have five. And the Lord had blessed us. And uh, the third one is going... Is DJ going junior now? Yeah, junior, right? Next year? Yeah, I don't even know. You know? Uh, but DJ is going junior in college now next year. Oh, this year, you think? Oh, you see? She is graduating sometime, okay? <laughs> uh, and, then, and then James is, uh, is uh, thinking now about his college. And uh, Joel is uh, thinking about finishing college in one week, you know? He, he doesn't like to go to school. <laughs> that boy, uh, he needs to get born again again, you know? But, uh, but I'm happy. Do I have problems? Yes. But this is God's choice. This is God's choice. I, I thank God that uh, he gave me my wife. You husbands should be thankful to the Lord for your wives. At least may nagkagusto sa inyo. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, the following, the following uh, command statement the one that, that we'll be following is based on that. We are holy, we are chosen, and we are holy. We are a new man. Now, keep in mind that now Paul is talking about the Christian family. This is not talking about church leadership, okay? This is not talking about church leadership. It is not talking about that. that. By the way, one of the questions that is often asked to me, especially in this society, is this. I was asked, well, well, pastor, say, how about, how about me, my husband or my wife, when we got married, uh, we had other partners before. Drop the question. Drop the question. It will, it will uh, give you heartaches. Okay? The fact that you are married now, God made the choice. You obeyed. That's it. What about in the Bible? That's the same in the Bible. You think... You think every person that got married in the Bible are virgins? You are reading a different Bible. Have you heard of uh, a guy by the name of Abraham? Right? Have you heard of him? He's got problems with Sarah. You know, but Sarah lived long. That man, the moment she died, he got married again. <laughs> so fast. I think at the age of 127. 
he married a young woman by the name of Ketura. You know, so she must be very pretty. Some scholars say she is 14 years old. 127. Apo mo na sa kuku. Pinatulan pa ni Abraham. Iba talaga, a father of many nations talaga yan. Biblical talaga. But, <laughs> but he, got, he got married right away. Yeah. But he was faithful to his wife when, he was, when she, was, she, she was alive, you know. So don't, don't think about the past. I think a lot of people get stuck. That past is past. Okay. You're married now. And so live with it. And uh, that's how you move on. The difference, though, for example, is after you get born again and uh, you did something foul. Because then you know the word of God, the responsibility is a lot higher. But some people cannot get over this idea, especially, especially the Christians. The unbelievers are better at this. What you have is what you have. Billy Graham, when he was alive, being asked a question along this area, said this, do not unscramble an already scrambled egg you will fail, okay? Just enjoy your scrambled egg. It's already scrambled. The moment it's served, don't say, I want sunny side up. It's not gonna work. It is already a scrambled egg. Enjoy your scrambled egg. Put some chili sauce on it, you know, so it will burn your tongue, but that's what you have, okay? Just live with it. Say, I will live with it. I mean, you're not saying it like you're convinced, you know. Just, just fake it a little bit, okay? Say, I will be it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now, uh, the, the, in, this, in this choice, part of the instruction is this. Wives, husbands, children, fathers, Slaves. Your household help becomes part of the family. Why? Because the household help is involved, is influenced, and can, can influence the family. Which means if you are head of the house, you have to be careful even on the choice of help you allow inside your house. Now, because some people say, well, I have no control over my friends. You have to control it now. You are building, okay, you are building your new home. You've got to control everything. I, I told you the story with our limited budget when I was building this house. I was going to the basement one day and I saw this uh, two workers, and the moment I walk down, they pretend to be busy. So I decided to walk back out and walk back in again. They were, si they were sitting down again, and when they saw me, they pretend to be busy again. So I talked to my supervisor, uh, the foreman of our work. I said, I caught them twice. I said, I don't want to see their face again. Following day, they were fired. Why? Because I cannot allow them to steal from me. Because if I hire them to do a work and they're not doing the work, they're stealing from me. Okay? And I want to show that to my kids and to my wife. That that is not an acceptable thing in the house. Why? Because I'm training my kids. They're going to see these things. And so when they grow up and it's time for them to build their own, they're going to remember their father. They're going to remember their mother. You see? Yesterday, uh, we're buying, my wife was buying something for, for, my, for my son here. And he called his kuya because, you know, uh, their kuya is their kuya. And he has been an example to my other children. And so he called his kuya. Kuya, what do you think about this? And Joseph, being taught by his mom how to shop, said, James, whatever choice mama has, whatever recommendation, just follow it. You'll be okay. Why? Because that's how he learned. That's how we learn. His choices are pretty much affected by my wife. 
you know. And, and this is the kind of thing that we are involved in building a family. It involves even, even the people that you allow in your house. Okay. It involves even the people that you allow in your house. Okay. Remember Adrian? Uh, he, he doesn't know that he was, he was, uh, he was, I think he was with the house of his friend. He doesn't know that she is a vegan, an extreme vegan. I know what an extreme vegan, or a super vegan, something like that. Any, any vegan here? Okay, thank God. Uh, <laughs> he said he was going to, he was going to cook his breakfast. And he said, I took some bacon, put it in a, in a, in a pan, a, a frying pan, and he said he was doing his bacon, and, and this vegan girl walked up and screamed at her, what did you do? It's, what, what happened? He said, you polluted my pan. It's a vegan pan. It's not supposed to be touched by an animal oil. Now that is in terms of food. Because she's a vegan in terms of food, my frying, my, my cooking pan cannot be touched by an animal oil. That's just a vegan. You know what happens after you eat the food? It goes into your tummy. And then what happens? You decide to sit down. It goes out. <laughs> right? That's how my father taught me. When my father was teaching me not to be envious over the rich, he told me, he said, don't be envious over the rich because they have good food. He said, don't, don't be envious. I said, he said, I know we are poor, but don't be envious of them. I said, why? I said, they, they are eating the food that they like. He said, Jose, after they eat, they feel full. Now, after you eat, do you feel full? I said, yes. After they feel full, give it some time, they'll feel something. <laughs> and he said, they will sit down like the way you do. And he said, when it comes out, it all smells the same. <laughs> I mean, that's wisdom from my father, you know? <laughs> So, so he, told, he told me, don't be, don't be envious. Now, this woman was very zealous over a prying fan. And I was thinking about that when I was preparing this sermon. A lot of us, we are trying to, to have a God-fearing family. We are trying to have a holiness in our house. And we allow just anybody to put anything in our frying pan. And we wonder, how come it smells? Well, it's your choice. It's your choice. You allow that to happen. It's your frying pan. It's your. It's the family that you are that you are building, that uh, that you are that you are designing. And so you will do not expose yourself to something that can that can corrupt you. Now, when I say expose, expose, what I mean there is friendship and association. Okay, because we are exposed. We are, we are, we are on this earth. That's what Jesus said. But we have to be very careful what we allow in our families. Now, this new home will have new outfit or new uniform. Everyone in the house needs to put on this outfit. So if you say, well, pastors, I want to build a new home, a, uh, a God-like family. Now, this is the new outfit, okay? Put on, say put on. Say it again. Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, when, spiritually, when Paul is talking about putting on, before you can put on the new man, you have to put off the old self. What is the old self? Adulterous, idolatrous, thief, you know, all of those negative things. You have to put them off. You have to take them off. The moment you take them off, then you can put this on. You don't put this on while the old uniform is on. Because the idea of putting on in the Bible is this, like put Christ on, put on Christ. The moment you put on something, it remains on you. When it says put on Christ, it's not something that you put on right now and you put, take off again. There is an idea of permanence. You want to build a Christian family that God wants. The first thing is this, every member of that house has to put on compassion,
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Now, this outfit will never wear out. Now, the only thing I can think of as a picture is Exodus. They came out of Egypt. Uh, Egypt is a picture of sin. They are going to the promised land. What is the promised land? That's their new home. So they are in route to the promised land. Have you noticed? God told them that night, I want you to eat your supper fully dressed, ready to go. Those dress did not wear out. Because the moment you put it on, it didn't wear out. So compassion, kindness, patience, all of this will never wear out. They will never be out of fun. And they will always be fitting to you. Take note also that those qualities above, let, let me read them to you again. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. All of those qualities, they are most difficult to apply inside your house. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, most difficult to apply inside your house. Now let's talk about it. Compassion. Our family members need help. And you know what? We're very slow in giving it. You know. let's, let's take, for example, homework. Your friends ask for help in their homework. Okay, I'll help you. Your siblings ask for your homework. I'm bobo mo naman. You just don't want to help. Yeah. But this outfit, within the family, compassion. Yeah. Look. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll continue. Kindness. Kindness is doing good things for another. L let me ask you this. Just a very personal question. Don't answer. Okay. When your friends have a birthday, how much time do you spend thinking of what gift you're going to give? And how much are you willing to allocate to buy that gift? Oh, my friends can have birthday in two weeks. And, uh, how much time do you spend thinking about what you're going to give? Your mother has a birthday. Your father has a birthday. Your siblings has a birthday. Did you, do you even think about it? Hmm. My bet, you don't. Because kindness or doing something beneficial for others, we want to do it for others, not with our family. You know why? We are people pleasers. We want to be complimented as very good, very generous but within the family. You know what, what, what really made me very, very upset when I was growing up is how my father would spend tons of money buying booze. And when my father gets drunk, <clears throat> he spends for everything. He'll start at around 9 in the morning until evening. The guy just drowned himself in liquor. And, and beer is nothing to him. You know, and... When, when people say, well, I drank beer and I got drunk, I smile. You know, what, what kind of stomach do you have? Because my, my father will drink beer from morning until around 2 p.m. I know the time. I don't know it's like that, around 2 p.m. He's still not drunk. Then he's going to go for the real stuff, you know. Marca de Monio. I mean, the name itself is Talagang <laughs> Marca de Monio, you know. Uh, and he will pay. The reason why I know he will pay is because I buy it. And then I will have instances where in my slippers will be broken and I'll, I'll beg my shoes. I remember when I started playing basketball, I want basketball shoes. My father won't buy me, but he will, he will buy uh, uh, alcohol for his friend. Oh, that, that makes me very, very upset. But kindness, listen, <clears throat> husbands, you better be super kind to your wives. I'm not looking, okay? <laughs> if you are married, 
and you think of, uh, of doing good things for others outside of that marriage, people thinking of doing something for your wife, you just sin. Because the application of this is within the family. Okay? Wives. You better be generous to your husbands. Lalaki yan naman yung sumagot. Ay, nako. Because sometimes if we think about, now I'm not saying don't be generous to others. Remember this, the equivalent is this. God requires the tithes, right? That there will be food in my house. The offering is when you have extra. The same thing with our relationship with others. You put your family first. Don't you ever think, listen to me, you want to build a good family? Don't you ever think of giving a gift to somebody outside your family if you don't even know how to give gifts to the members of your family? You are a man pleaser. Shame on you. You want to build a good family? Now, I, I'm putting together now all, all the teachings and applying it here. I, you know, look, my, my, uh, my family back home is less fortunate or less blessed than I am. And uh, they need help. You think I give them something without telling my wife uh, or without making sure that my family is taken care of first? No. God gave me this family. This is my priority. If you are giving your money outside of your family and your family's need is not taken care of, you have a big problem. That will make your family very unhappy. Kindness. Gentleness. When our, when our family members are going through tough times or rough times, are we gentle with them? You know, if, listen to me. Even the way we talk to each other. I want you to make a mental comparison now. The way you talk to your friends. I, I've seen this even in my family, the siblings, you know. They'll be, they'll be talking to each other. They'll be, my, my, my kids will be screaming at each other. Wow, I, I mean, para mga sabungero. And then the phone ring, hello. They are, they are gentle with outsiders, but within the family, they're just rude. That is wrong. Okay? And then look at this. Patience. We want, we want our family members perfect right now. It's not going to happen, okay? But look at the last two, the gentleness and the kindness. Uh, this, these two things, we, we really don't think about, we assume it's there. But, but, but you have to be extra. You know? Like, that's why I, I tell you this, if my kids tell me, Papa, pa, Papa, I need shoes. Okay, let's get shoes. I have to be kind to them. You know, I, I broke my work shoes, so I told, I told my wife, uh, accompany me, I want to buy a new pair of work shoes. There's holes in it already. You know, when you're working, it gets ruined. So. But James has been helping me, so I said, James, I'll, I'll, you have to buy work boots. I'm very happy to tell him that, and he was very happy to choose his own. I end up not buying anything. Yeah, because uh, I, I can't find what I need. I can't buy heavy boots because it's, it hurts my feet. But because he helps me, and I did this to Joseph also, because he helped me, I have to think. He never asked me if he can have work boots, but I have to be kind to him. I have to protect his feet. You know. If it's cold, and he's going out like last Friday, he doesn't have a jacket, I yell at him. Uh, what are you going to boast? You're going to go out in this weather without a jacket, you're going to get sick. I cannot have you getting sick. 
Oh, I, I, I so get one of my suits and he put it on just to protect himself. I have to be kind to him. If, if you have the habit of showing kindness to those outside of your family and you neglect kindness to your own family members, you are in sin. My mother, when my father was still a drunkard, <clears throat> was always complaining because my mother would say, let's buy this. And my, mother, my father would say, don't be too expensive. And yet, when the drunkards came, he'll just be all out. Yeah. That, that makes my, my mother very, very upset. Uh, I've seen this also. I have good grades, and my you know, parents brag about their kids, so they, they brag about me. And so while, while they're drinking, my, my, the drinking bodies of my, of my uh, father will say, what does Jose want? And he will say, well, he wants to be a lawyer, because I want him to be a lawyer. And my father says, but he will not go to law school. It's too expensive. He will not go to college. And I remember the fellow drunkards will plead with my father and say this. Oh, Pakin, you have to send your son to school. He's a bright boy. You have to send him to school. You know, now that I get old, because I know those people, come to think of it, they were telling my father to send me to school. They never send their kids to school. What a bunch of hypocrites. Can you imagine you, you are telling somebody, hey, do the best for your kids, and you're not doing the best for your kids? What are you, nuts? That's why the, the members of the house end up being embittered, especially when they see you super nice on outsiders. And you know what I mean by outsiders, okay? Those outside the family. These are, these are the worst kind of hypocrites. Because when you go home and you're sick, guess who takes care of you? Those that you think of last. And those that you think of first, they don't even know. And then they run away. When my father was shot, none, believe me, I was there, none of his drinking buddies came to visit him in the hospital. After that shooting uh, where he almost died, that's when my father began to change. That's when he got born again. That's when he began to change. He, began, he was still a drunkard, but he began to drink less because he realized all the people that he spent tons of money on, they never visited me in the hospital. Never did. You see? Because at your worst condition, that's when you will know who your friends really are. And then, uh, so he said, put on this, and then he said, bear with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has grievance against each other. The construction seems to indicate that this is an ongoing thing. You keep, you, you bear with each other. Uh, it has a picture of when you have a burden. You, you carry each other's uh, a burden. You know, like, I, I think being, being a mother, uh, she still helps homeworks of my kids. You know, I'm getting a little bit old now. So I told Joseph, Joseph, buy your house now. If you're going to buy in Chicago, buy your house now. And he asked me why. I said, because I still have strength to help you fix it. Yeah. Um, because as much as possible, you want to do kindness uh, to them. C can you imagine if you are helping others fix their place and then you are not fixing your own place? That will embitter your wife. Can you imagine if you are bringing out people to eat outside and you're not even dating your wife or your husband? Yeah. You feed others expensive food and your kids, you only bring them to McDonald's? You know, this is good teaching, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so bear with... Oh, and, and 
forgiving one another. Yeah. The people that you will forgive the most are those who are inside your house. Because those who are inside your house will be the ones to offend you the most. I know how many times my wife forgives me every day. I think it's more than 70 times 7, you know. I don't know how many times my wife has to forgive my children. Sometimes my, my, my wife acts like one of my children. Yeah. I'll be studying in my office and she'll be rushing in. Sweetheart, and she'll talk to yourself. Oh, I said, I said why? I said why? She is, he is very disrespectful. She's very disrespectful. And it's like one of my kids telling me. Nagsusumbong. Eh, kasi, my wife did not did not grow taller anymore, you know. But my, all my kids <laughs> kept getting, thank God I'm still the tallest, you know. Uh, but, but all my kids ha have gotten tall. And, and, she, and she, is, she is feeling uh, worn out. I mean, she gave birth to five kids. You know how much it takes from a person? You know how much? Because I don't know how much. <laughs> five kids. Kids came out of that little body. And those kids that came out of her little body are bigger than her body now. You know? And then I was, I was, uh, I was telling Joel, you know, jo Joel, when, when, uh, when you guys were sick and you could not breathe because of a stuffy nose, I said, your, your mother will suck the fluid from your nose. Papa, did you do it? No way. No way. <laughs> I'll spit on your face, but I'll not do that, you know. But, but my, my wife, I was looking at my wife, what are you doing? Well, he, he needs to breathe, or she needs, and, and then she will tell me, can you kiss me? No. no, no. <laughs> but she does that. That's why I am offended when, when one of my kids disrespect my wife. Yeah, that's very offensive to me. And uh, forgiveness, siblings, those of you who are, have, have siblings, you will forgive each other a lot more. And, and the problem is sometimes over-familiarity prevents the siblings from putting a control in their tongue. They can be so mean to each other. Yeah. And children can be so mean to their parents. The way they address them. Yeah. You want, you want a God-designed family? Oh, well, I'm so my good. Okay. Let's move on to the second coming of Christ, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Above all, Put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. For all, uh, for I believe that love is the hinge that, that holds everything. It's a glue. It's the glue that keeps things together. Okay? But love has these qualities of kindness, patience. Above all, put on love. We cannot exercise compassion, kindness, gentleness, humility, and patience unless, unless we allow we, we put on love. You put it on deliberately. You know. There, there will be times you don't, you don't feel like loving, but you have to love. My wife will be screaming all over the house saying, Do your homework! It's getting late! Mama, mama, relax. I, it annoys her because my kids are actually telling her to relax. Mama, relax. My, my wife is fuming. She's... She's... she's uh, if, if there is smoke coming out of ears, it will be coming out of your ears. Ah! Mama, relax, it's okay. And then come around 11.30. Are you done with your homework? No, not yet. Ah! My wife will, will, will transform, you know, and, and, and she will, she will, and after all of that, okay, what do you need to help? She puts on love. And you know what I do? I sleep. But, but she puts on love. That is 
a deliberate thing. It's not based on your feeling. Love now becomes a choice. You see, if you're, if you're going, if you're going to, uh, to have compassion, kindness, gentleness, humility, and patience, you have to make that choice. I, uh, I keep telling all my boys, boys, when you get married, you better marry somebody that you love. Make sure that you love her. Because if you don't love her, you will kill her. You know? Some of you are very quiet now. Pastor said, I'm thinking that way. Stop thinking that way. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You, know? you have, because you have to put it on. You have to put it on. You have to be, to be very deliberate. Then he said, let the peace of Christ Uh, which uh, uh, let the peace of Christ be the ruler of your hearts. Let the peace of Christ, which you were called in one body, rule your hearts. Now, first, this is the same peace that God blessed the church with. Now, it's being applied to family and family members. Meaning, each of us uh, so when, when you guys are deliberating, when you are struggling against each other, let the peace of God guard your hearts. The word, judge, be the judge of your hearts. Uh, guard, the, the, the word that was used here is be the referee. Okay, Meaning, be the umpire of your hearts. Be the referee. So you are struggling, right? You're struggling, you're fighting, blah, 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 blah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. You know, pag away na away talaga. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it. And then if you're going to finalize the decision, you know who will be the referee? Peace. The moment you make a decision that affects your family, do you have peace? That's why you cannot force your idea on anybody in the family. Especially if it will take away the peace. Yeah. I, I, told you, I told you before I was, I learned this because I was fighting my wife over color of the paints, cabinets, you know, cabinets. That's my biggest trial, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm beginning to think when I die, I will be buried in one of those cabinets. <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think my wife will call Brother Lawrence and say, put these two cabinets together, you know. <laughs> I don't know how many cabinets Brother Lawrence have doctored. Uh, but uh, I was thinking that way. I was fighting my wife and everybody. I'm the head of the house. And there is no peace. So at the end, I, I told my wife, listen, it's your house. I don't kiss my house. You know. Uh, okay, what, what, what color do you want? And, and you know, sometimes I put up those cabinets in pain. I am dying inside. <laughs> you know, I'm not joking. It's funny, but... Uh, Bakit ko ba kinakabit yung cabinet na to? Kung pwede lang ako, isahabit ko na lang sarili ko. <laughs> but peace has to be maintained. Uh, now, everybody has to be like that. My, my kids need their room and all of those things. But you cannot make a decision that after you make a decision, there is chaos. And one of the statements that you really don't like to end your deliberations in is this. Bahala na! Don't do that. Then there's turmoil. There's, there's turmoil. Now, this is not as easy as you think it is because of your emotions. You may agree on something, but inside, you just lost your peace. Now, this is where your 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 new man 
is the must. It's the necessity. Unless you are born again, unless you have put Christ on, this is impossible. Yeah. And even if you are born again, unless the, the grace of the Lord is growing more and more in your life, this is impossible. That's why now you look at this. You are looking at all of this. And this, these are actually simple. The word of the Lord is, is that simple. But because of our fallen state, you look at all of this and you begin to say, I, I still cannot do it. So now you look up to God. That's why the peace of Christ, the love of Christ, the compassion of the Lord, kindness coming from God, the love of Christ, all of this should fill your hearts. Unless your compassion, your kindness, your humility, your gentleness, your patience, your peace, unless all of these are tied up to your relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the source of all of these clothing, you will not make it. Yeah, you will not make it. Now, don't say, look at them, they are, they are very happy. Uh, some people say, look, look at that actress. She's very happy with, this, with, this, with, with her husband. Yeah, how many husbands is that now? Look, look at that husband, that actor. He's very happy with his wife. Yeah, how many wives does he have now? He, he doesn't have peace. He doesn't have peace, you know. In all of this, we, we come to the realization we cannot be fulfilled in our own lives without Jesus Christ. Amen? But with Jesus Christ, now we can do all things. Because whatever you do, in word or in deed, within the family, do it as unto the Lord. Amen? We will continue tonight, okay? Please. Learn something this morning? If, if, if you're not here tonight, make, make sure you watch the conclusion, okay? Because I'm excited in the conclusion. <laughs> Because next week we're going to go to the book of John. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Praise God.